Thunderdome Boxing Talk, Anthony here. Alright, I want to talk about the uh, Sergey Kovalev, Jean Pascal, light heavyweight title fight. Uh, Kovalev's putting up, you know, the WBA Super World title, uh, the IBF World title, and the WBO World title. Okay, uh, against Pascal, as we all know, at the light heavyweight division. Um, <clears throat> Start with like Kovalev. All right, he's six foot tall with a seventy-two and a half inch reach. Thirty-one years old. Uh, record of twenty-six and zero and one, with twenty-three big wins by knockout. Uh, that's a eighty-five percent KO ratio. Now Pascal, on the other hand, is five foot ten and a half. Uh, listed with a 72-inch reach, 32 years old, with a record of 29, 2, and 1. Uh, 17 big wins by way of knockout. That's a 51% uh, KO ratio. That draw was to Hopkins uh, up there in uh, Quebec. Uh, Hopkins and... I think the majority of people's eyes, he, he, he deserved the win in that fight. Uh, he, he got revenge in the rematch and, and, and got the W in that fight uh, by unanimous decision. And Frotch also beat uh, Pascal by unanimous decision. Now, Kovalev, <clears throat> you know, was riding... He's still riding a big wave. You know, he had uh, nine KOs in a row up until he fought Hopkins, who everyone thought was going to give him a pretty tough fight. Uh, you know, even if you picked him, you still thought he was going to give him a tough fight. I don't think anybody picked it. He would just score 120 uh, Bernard Hopkins. That was pretty amazing. Um, you know, and then Pascal... Uh, his last fight against Belanti, you know, you really couldn't take much from it just because, you know, Belanti just kind of, you know, kind of just came to lay it down. Uh, but Pascal, you know, the the beginning of last year, 2014, you know, Pascal looked really good against uh, Lucien Butte. Now, Pascal did get... Uh, you know, buzzed slightly at the end of that fight, but, you know, he, uh, he clearly won that fight, and definitely, um, uh, definitely showed <clears throat> that he is still, you know, one of the best in the light heavyweight division, without a question, you know, it's, it's Pascal, Hopkins, Kovalev, and Stevenson, uh, but, you know, we're getting, we got to see Kovalev Pascal. He went into basically Hopkins' backyard, you know, Jersey anyway. Uh, now he's going up to Pas. Did I say he went to Hopkins' backyard? Now he's going up to Pascal's backyard up in uh, Montreal, Quebec. You know, so he's actually a world champion. He don't mind traveling to someone's backyard. You know, he's not afraid that, you know, uh, he's confident in himself and his abilities. He, he's not really that worried that it's going to be that close of a fight, that they might be able to take it from him or give it a draw. You know, um, Pascal, you know, his, uh, he has a lot, of, um, a lot of skills that we might see uh, cause Kovalev problems. Like, mainly, uh, you know, his, his fast hands. His fast reflexes, uh, and just flat out athleticism and, and great footwork. You know, fast in and out, uh, real fast in and out on his feet. So uh, I'm looking forward <clears throat> to seeing how he's gonna bounce all around and try and get at uh, Kovalev from different angles. You know, I think he his most success should come in like the first four or five rounds. Uh, and we talked about this on the show last night as well, that that we, yeah, that we um, thought, uh, you know, 
Kovalev is going to kind of play it safe in those uh, early rounds and just, you know, work off the jab, keep his guard up, make sure you don't get caught with nothing silly. Uh, let let uh, Pascal, you know, wear, wear his initial energy out uh, and slow him down a little bit. That way Kovalev can have him, like, uh, in front of him a little more often than them first few rounds. Because I expect right off the bat, uh, Pascal is going to be bouncing all over the place, trying to get him from every possible angle. Uh, and Kovalev should be working in camp on, you know, turning fast enough to make sure he doesn't, you know, uh, you know, make sure Pascal doesn't hop to the side and then fire a hook in, right in between his guards or loop something around. You know, when he see he needs to keep that line right on him and keep following him wherever he goes. Uh, so, but that would be Pascal's best chance would be to just, you know, jump on Kovalev, hope to catch him cold, you know, and try to really do some damage early. Uh, but I think Kovalev is going to be prepared for that. And uh, like I said, play it careful the first few rounds. You know, keep touching them. Keep touching them. Try to break them down slowly. Uh, you know, a lot of jabs to the body. You know, a lot of jabs to the head. A lot of feints to keep uh, Pascal guessing and worried when uh, a big power shot might be coming. You know, that could keep uh, Pascal at a distance and keep him uh, hesitant on, you know, launching his own attack. And then Kovalev can kind of keep keep walking him down, you know, pressing the action, but at a, at a, at a measured pace and also, you know, a, a, a careful attack. You know, keep that jab out there, keep touching him, and keep changing up that speed on it, you know? Some touch, touch, and then bang on, you know? And then touch, bang, bang, you know, and then drive that right down on him. Um, it's going to be hard, I think, for Kovalev to, to really um, do what he wants with Pascal at the beginning, just because of Pascal's style, how he's, you know, all over the place. And uh, really, there's no one that really fights like Pascal, uh, especially at the higher weight classes. You know, he got great legs uh, for a big man. You know, uh, so and I, I've 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 said this before that you know, and it, it tends to be this way for most fighters. You know, but we finally saw what Kovalev, you know, what his, his basic blueprint. Uh, for every fight, I believe, is going to be, you know, just what we saw in the Hopkins fight. Except, you know, he'll tweak it uh, just for each individual opponent. You know, basically what everybody does. But now we know what Kovalev is going to be doing, you know, most of the time. You know, he still might have some tricks up his sleeve. I'm sure he does that we haven't seen yet. But that will be the the, the basic uh Kovalev game plan that we'll see, you know, and then you can add on the additional uh, tweaks that he does for each individual opponent. Um, uh, like I said, I would, I would imagine him to start pl to play it safe them first few rounds. Try to get um, uh, Pascal to burn off some of that nervous energy. And plus, I also think he's going to be bouncing around like 20 to 30 percent more than he usually does in them early rounds uh, just because he's not going to want to get caught and he's going to want to try and confuse Kovalev and come in with something so I think he's going to end up uh, burning a lot of gas you know within them first six rounds and he Pascal's always had uh, the, the issues with you know running out of gas late in fights um, you know, is his stamina going to be better for this one? I doubt it. You know, uh, could be slightly better, but, you know, it could be slightly worse. You know, um, so in general, I would just expect the same. You know, and with Kovalev's body, uh, body shots, even when he's just touching these guys with the jab, I mean, it hurts them. You know, it, it's, 
knocking wind right out of them. You know, so all he got to do is really, uh, you know, you know, keep touching him, go high, go low, you know, touch him to the belly, fire straight, faint him, you know, keep that jab out a lot like we saw um, when he fought Agnew, like when he fought Hopkins, a lot of that same stuff, you know, um, Pascal has very fast hands, you know, very fast hands, uh, and probably the, f the best example that we have seen Kovalev face with someone with similar fast hands was Agnew, and he was able to get out of the way of those shots, even when Agnew came in, you know, with a super fast shot, uh, you know, it would come barely about to hit him, but he'd have that quick enough defensive reflex to just get right, barely get out the way. You know, and he would come right back and do his own thing, and he broke down Agnew something fierce. Uh, Agnew was a tough son of a gun, though. He took a hell of a beating. Um, he, he, that was the, his, Agnew's first loss, you know, and he took, the, he took that loss very hard, so he came to win, okay, and he gave it his all, uh, I always gave Agnew a lot of credit for that performance, even though he lost, he still tried his heart out, he just couldn't do it, um, but Pascal, you know, is, is similar when it comes to, like, <clears throat> the level of power that they hit at, uh, him and Agnew, because Agnew probably hits right around the same where Pascal hits, and, uh, their speed level was similar, even though I think Pascal definitely has the faster hands um but not much faster definitely faster but not much faster so i think uh kovalev should be able to deal with the speed of pascal's hands and i don't like how pascal always keeps his uh his left down and he'll just sling the jab sling it up there sling it up there you know uh because he He's leaving himself open for, you know, either a counter jab or a counter one-two. Or Kovalev bats his jab down and then fires the two right behind it. Bat, bat, you know, bat, bat. And it, that could happen, you know. Uh, Pascal has a decent chin, but not an iron chin. And Pascal or and Kovalev hits like a mule, so he can definitely hurt Pascal. Uh, I've seen Kovalev take some very good shots to the chin. Uh, you know, even from uh, Cedric Cedric Agnew laid some uh, pretty big shots on him, and he took them just fine. <coughs> now. What? Uh, what I think Pascal would maybe just try to stick around and conserve his energy and then maybe try to, you know, uh, time Kovalev and then put something on him big at the end. Uh, I don't think he would do that considering that, you know, he's probably going to end up taking punishment in the process. And he has had uh, stamina issues in the past, so that wouldn't be the best game plan to rely on. Uh, it's possible it could work, but there's no guarantee, number one, that he would make it to the later rounds. Um, and there's no guarantee that he's going to have the stamina that he would make a big uh, run for it in those later rounds. So, I would, like I said, I would expect him to come out uh, fast. And uh, attacking right off the rip. You know, maybe not the first round. Might get a feel-out round. But after that, we're going to see uh, Pascal start to open up. And that's when we'll see, you know, Kovalev playing it safe. But touching him up. Mixing it up but being safe. And then once Pascal starts to slow down, we'll really see Kovalev then pick it up and methodically break him down. Uh, and that's how I see the fight playing out, and that's how I see Pascal, or Kovalev, I'm sorry, uh, winning this fight. I see him either winning it, you know, uh, either by unanimous decision, um, because I think at the most, Pascal's gonna get, you know, maybe four or five rounds at most, um, and, you know, 
eight, seven, eight rounds are going to be Kovalev's. And I think it'll be pretty hard to score the fight for Pascal, even if it's in his hometown. Uh, I just see it being hard for him to, you know, win a solid six rounds of the fight. Uh, like an undeniable six rounds. Uh, I don't even see him winning, you know, four clear as day and then two that could go either way. I just see Kovalev winning at least seven rounds clear. Uh, so I would think, you know, Kovalev by unanimous decision, or he might even get Pascal out of there in the mid to late rounds. Uh, I would think, though, it wouldn't happen right at the beginning. It would happen once Pascal started to slow down. Um, and if later on in the fight, like the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th round comes around, and if he's gassed, he's going to get taken out of there. Uh, there's no way around it. He will get taken out if, uh, if he gasses noticeably. You know, he's obviously going to be tired, but if he gets, like, I, like, you know, gassed, he's gone. Uh, so he needs to be careful on his pace. And I'm thinking he might have a lot of nervous energy in this fight and be burning it up and jumping all around real early. And that's going to end up costing him in the later rounds. Um, and if he's not careful, he could get KO'd. You know, so uh, that's how I see the fight playing out. And I am going Kovalev all the way in this fight. Um, you know, I don't see it. Honestly, I don't see anybody in the light heavyweight division right now. Uh, not not anyone in 2015 anyway or on the horizon right now that's going to give Kovalev too many problems. You know, uh, Stevenson, I think Kovalev would easily beat Stevenson. Stevenson just has a puncher's chance. So he would have to kind of come in and go for broke. Uh, and we know Stevenson doesn't necessarily have the best chin either. So I think uh, if he got into a firefight with Kovalev, that that would be his worst nightmare. Um, I think Kovalev wins this fight, wins it convincingly. Um, and then, you know, is going to be uh, the mandatory for um, Stevenson. Stevenson is mandated to fight the winner of this fight. Yeah, I believe it's going to be Kovalev. So I am curious to see what Heyman and Stevenson do with that WBC belt whenever the WBC uh, says fight Kovalev or drop the belt because it's coming in March. All right, so uh, that's my prediction. Kovalev all the way. Um, you know, I normally don't give a, a way they're going to win. I'll just say it could happen, you know, a couple ways it could happen. Uh, I don't think it would be a split decision, you know. I think it's going to be a unanimous decision or, you know, mid to late round KO whenever Ooh, uh, Pascal slows down a bit. You know, but with Kovalev's power, he can take anybody out at any time if he lands on them. So, it is what it is. Uh, that's my prediction. Thunderdome Boxing Talk. Uh, we got a Facebook group also. Uh, Tracy Starnes hosts it. Uh, I'm in there all the time, too, if you want to talk boxing or anything. Just keep it uh, intelligent debates about anything boxing related, old school, new school, you know, business, corruption, whatever. You know, just keep it intelligent. Uh, it's the Thunderdome Boxing Group on Facebook. I will post the link in the description box. All right. Uh, come join if you'd like. All right. Anthony uh, here saying stay safe till next time. Peace.